My name is Andy Cropper. I'm a resident artist at the Sufi of Space in town. I've always loved art. Uh, I'd, I'd go as far as to say that when I was at primary school in like reception class, art was my favourite subject. But I never really thought of it as being something I could do as a career. You either, you either go to art college and become an artist or you don't and you don't do anything with art. So I only ever went as far as art GCSE and then um, I left school when I was 16. Went on a YTS course at a graphic design studio and, um, and then from there I was put in a placement in a shop and that's I got into retail and that was the what I thought was the end of my art career <laughs> as such <laughs> and then when lockdown came when you know when pandemic started I was furloughed and I knew quite a lot of people who were artists and into art and one of my friends opened a lockdown art group and I joined it and that was kind of rekindled everything my relationship with art changed I don't know I think it's just the, the thing you said about before about finding the love for it and um, whereas before I didn't really have that that passion for it, because now I have the passion for it, it's the thing that really motivates me most about anything in my life. Art is the most important thing right now. Um, so now I tend to think of ideas in my head and I think I'll paint that or I'll, I'll make some art of that or I'll create some art of that. Somebody came in today and gave me a sheet of metal I don't even be able to do anything with this and straight away I thought, I'll make something with it, I'll create something with it. So it's it's just getting your imagination fired up and just being able to think of different scenarios and different creative angles for different, for maybe really mundane situations as well and just turning it into something a little bit bizarre maybe. This is my life now. This is This is my life now. I tend to do a lot of my family in my art. I tend to do a lot of images of my children as they were growing up. Um, but I tend to kind of put little twists on them and alter details of them to make them a little bit more um, maybe unrealistic or a bit different. Um, and, I, and I kind of quite have a lot of fun doing that, you know, taking a picture of my daughter and saying I'm going to like turn you into a nun or you know, <laughs> this kind of thing. And sometimes I say, oh, mum, do you have to? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's not really you, it's just my imagination. I'm just using your face. And sometimes a lot of my work is fired up from just something really basic and simple, what somebody might say, that kind of puts a little idea in your head. Um, I once went out and took a selfie of me and my friend, and I showed the photo to somebody and they said, oh, you've both got a nice smile. And I said, what, only one smile between us? And that then created the image that I did of the, the, the two heads with one mouth and the tongue sticking out, which was really fun to do. Um, but it all just came from that one little comment. I've always seen these kind of images. Um, I used to see things like when I was younger, we had some bathroom curtains and I could see Jesus in them. Um, my sister, I don't know if I should say, my sister had the Yorkshire Ripper in a damp patch on the ceiling. Um, <laughs> Strange things like this. So we had three, we had um, three dogs in the door of our downstairs toilet. So I've always seen these kind of weird images, and um, I was just standing at the bus stop one day, and I just looked down and saw this patch of tarmac in the floor, and I just thought, oh, that looks like a, a ball gown. So I took a photo of it, and then went off and created a picture of a zombie lady in a in a ball gown. I'm still suffering from that lack of self-belief that I think a lot of artists do have in their own work um, and I'm fortunate that that my work has been recognised quite a bit now. Um, I've done some commissions for people, a lot of people have shown a lot of interest in it um, but I've been fortunate enough to have exhibitions being offered to me all over the world, um, Rome, Thailand, Iceland, Korea, numerous other places. <laughs> and it's it's all a bit mind-blowing, really. It's it's 
it's very mind blowing. One particular piece of work was um, inspired by a recent relationship breakup. Um, and it was quite cathartic to use the imagery of Salome from the Bible with the head of John the Baptist on the plate and just transpose that into <laughs> and it was quite it was quite cathartic to do that I had great fun doing it <laughs> I haven't really ever been inspired by other artists um, I don't even really look at much work from famous artists I I don't follow rules I don't I've never been to a workshop I've never took lessons I've never done an online tutorial I just literally whatever comes into my head I just get my paints and I just put it on the canvas and think yeah that looks good and if I'm happy with how it looks I don't care how it's done how I've achieved it I just slap the paint on there and hope for the best. I'm very, I, I don't fall, you know, sometimes I listen to people say, no, you need to use this and you need to mix it with that and you need to put it this way. And even my daughter says to me about layering and I'm like, I don't layer, I just bang the paint on. But I'm, I'm trying to be more consistent in how I do things and I'm trying to learn as I go along. But yeah, I, I tend to be very, um, follow my own rules and I think that's why I've never really done it before previously because in my mind I was just uh, an amateur and I wasn't doing it properly because I hadn't been trained it that's how I looked at it in my mind to be an artist you had to be trained and I've discovered now that that is not the case you just need the imagination and the creativity and the, the, the passion. I think those three things are just all you need to be an artist. And it don't matter what you use either. You know, it's anything can be used to create art. I've done several things with milk bottles <laughs> and pop bottles, mainly just from just little ideas that you might have. You might see, so you pick something up and you just get an idea in your head and you think, oh, I could make that into a... There's, there's a few different stories about how I came to create these things. The first one I ever made was literally a McFlurry box stuck on the front of a milk bottle with a load of paper feathers attached to it and I called it McFlurry Owlhead and that was literally the first thing I ever made. He still lives in my kitchen. He's still there and everybody loves McFlurry Owlhead. Then there was Pandora's milk bottle, which basically was a, a leaking milk bottle and a suction was formed, which twisted the milk bottle out of shape, but then the hole sealed itself. So the bottle was still sealed, but it still had milk inside. So I painted the outside of the bottle in these beautiful floral designs and I called it Pandora's milk bottle because the idea was that as time went on, it was, com it was completely sealed, but the insides were obviously full of milk. It was beautiful, but if you broke the seal and took the top off, the guts of hell would be unleashed. <laughs> and after a year, I did actually take the top off and empty it out. Did the guts of hell come out? Oh, it was disgusting. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, obviously uh, Lord and Lady Lacticus that you saw earlier on, the, my, uh, the ruler of the planet pasture on. I've written quite a bit of poetry and some of the poetry I've incorporated into my art as well because I'm not brave enough to stand up and read my poetry out to people. So I tend to incorporate it into my art instead. Um, and the haikus came about when I was doing a um, charity challenge. Uh, to raise money for the Rheumatoid Arthritis Society and I decided to do a, over 20 days to do a haiku and a doodle a day. So I did a, a haiku and a doodle to go together and, and I've saved all those as a, as a memento of my fantastic fundraising <laughs> efforts. <laughs> I started writing poetry, I'd say it was around about, around about the same time that I started the painting actually, when I had more time to be creative. Um, because before the pandemic I was in retail and retail is very draining, it's very draining. Um, it's kind of quite stifling and suffocating when it comes to creativity 
and it and it's exhausting. So you tend to, you know, when you're working in retail, you tend to work, sleep, eat, work, sleep, eat, and you don't have time for anything else. Um, so I, like I said, I was in retail, and then I went on sick because I was struggling with my mental health as well. And um, the painting and the writing of the poetry helped with that because art is incredibly therapeutic when it comes to mental health. Use art as, and creativity as therapy. For a lot of people that has actually developed into a full-blown love of art and they are now exhibiting. So hey, that's it cool. does work, it does work. Yeah. It's a nice feeling because I've struggled myself and I've been in situations where I haven't had that that support around me. It's very rewarding, yeah. More, More exhibitions, um, potentially meeting people in the art world um, and maybe meet the odd famous person along the way. There's no such thing as not being able to draw. There's no such thing as not being able to do art. Everybody can do art. Everybody has that capability. A lot of people are quite restrictive uh, or find themselves restricted or they're frightened to just do it. Try not to be too much of a perfectionist. Try not to be too limiting. Try not to copy other people. Just do what comes naturally. Just let the creativity flow. Everybody, if you pick up a pen, make a mark on a piece of paper. Pick up a paintbrush, just make a mark on a canvas and just go from there.